Sending email in Rails is easy thanks to Action Mailer, but you might run into a few gotchas. Let me show you how it works. Here I have a user signup form where they can type in their name and an email address. Now there's no password field here just to simplify this example. So I'll try submitting this form and clicking sign up, and this creates a new user record successfully. Now when this happens, I also want our Rails app to send out an email to the user thanking them for signing up. Now that sign up form is submitting to this user's controller create action I have set up, which currently just saves the user. Now when this happens, I want it to also send out that email. Now to send an email in Rails, we first need to create a mailer. Thankfully, Rails includes a generator to make this easier. Just run Rails generate mailer, and then you can give it any name you want. I'll call it user mailer. And then we can give it the name of the email we want it to send. I'll call it sign up confirmation, like that. Now that command generated this new app mailers directory, which includes a class called user mailer. So we can use this class to send out our sign up confirmation email. Now this also generated a new view for this message under the views directory under user mailers. There's a new view for this message, which includes the content of that email. Now notice that you can share instance variables between a view and the mailer itself, very much like a controller in Rails. Now it's important that this method end in a call to mail. This will generate the message and return it. And you can pass a variety of options into here, such as who you want to send it to and what you want the subject line to be, such as a sign up confirmation here. Now this comment up here shows us that we can also set the subject using internationalization, but I generally prefer to set it through an option directly here, unless I need to support multiple languages. Now, if you're wondering what other options you can pass into the mail method, check out the API documentation. You can see all the options there, such as who is from, carbon copy, reply to, and so on. Now, if you have multiple messages to find in your mailer and you want to share options between them, you can make a call to default and any options passed into here will automatically be applied to the mail call. So we could say from railscast.example.com and that way this message will be from that address. Now we still need to specify who we want to send this message to and that should be the email address submitted through the form. But by design, a mailer doesn't have access to request parameters. So we're going to have to send in the user model in some other way. So here I'm going to make the signup confirmation method accept a user model as an argument. So that way we can just call user.email here to send that email to that user. And I'm also going to pass this in as an instance variable so that we have access to it inside of the view here. So here I'll just uh, output the user's name and then say, Thank you for signing up, like that. So now this message is pretty much complete. We just need to send it through our controller. Now some prefer to send email through a model observer or a callback, but I prefer the controller so that way we don't unintentionally send an email when we're interacting with the model in other ways. So to send this email, we just need to make a call to user mailer and then the method which is sign up confirmation and then pass in our user model and then call deliver on that. Now you may have noticed that we're calling signup confirmation directly like a class method here, but when we defined it inside of our user mailer class, we defined it as an instance method. So what kind of magic is going on here to make it a class method? Well, for those curious, you can check out the Rails source code. It's under the action mailer base file, and further on down in this file, it's defined using method missing, and there it just creates a new instance of that mailer and calls message on that, which we end up calling deliver on. So that's how that works in the Rails source code. All right, so now that we know how this works, let's try it out. Now you might need to restart your Rails app for it to pick up that new mailer. And so I'll submit this form again, and this time it should send that email. Let's see if it did. But this doesn't work. My inbox for that address is still empty. Now by default, Rails will silently ignore any errors that occur while it's trying to send an email. So trying to debug this problem can be pretty frustrating. So that's why I recommend going into your development config file and setting this option that specifies raise delivery errors to true for action mailer. So that way we get an exception that is raised when it doesn't deliver. So now let's try submitting this form again after a quick restart of the app. And this time we get an exception that is raised saying it refused a connection. Now this error isn't all that useful either, but it basically means it can't connect to the SMTP server, which by default is specified as a local host here. 
Now going back to the development config file, we can change how the mail is sent by passing in an option called delivery method. And we can set that to either SMTP, send mail, file, or test. So you might want to play around with these settings if you want to send set up send mail on your machine, you can use that instead here. Now if you still want to use SMTP for delivery but specify a different server to use, you can just use uh, SMTP settings like this. And these settings will deliver using Gmail SMTP and you'll just need to fill in the username and password here. I'm just using environment variables for this. Now you'll need to restart the app to pick up those new settings, but once you do and submit the form, let's see, this time it works. We didn't get an error message. And under my Gmail account, there's my signup confirmation message, which contains the content, including the name passed into the form. Now an alternative way to test email delivery in development mode is to use my letter opener gem. All you have to do is add the gem to your gem file and change the mailer delivery method to letter opener, and then it will actually open up the mail message in the browser instead of sending it. Next, I want to show some common problems you might run into while sending email. One of them has to do with URLs. For example, at the bottom of our message, let's say we want to add a URL to our user's profile page. What we could do is call user URL and pass in our user instance. And now if I try submitting the signup form, this actually isn't going to work. It's going to give an error saying it can't generate the URL because it's missing a host option. Basically, it doesn't know what domain to use for the URL. To fix this, I need to go back into my development config file and add in the setting called a default URL options and specify the host option here for, to be localhost or whatever you want to use inside of the mailer URLs. The reason this is necessary is because our mailer doesn't have access to the request information so it doesn't know what host to use. So with that setting, the form will submit correctly and include that host option in the URL of the message. Now so far I've just been generating plain text emails, but we can make an HTML version of this email message as well. To do so, I'll need to make a new view file called signupconfirmation.html.erb. And I'll just paste in the content for this message, doing basically the same thing but in HTML. Now one thing to note is that I can use helper methods in here just like any other Rails view. And this way when the email gets delivered, it will include the HTML variation with that user profile link. Now be careful how you're styling your HTML email though. I go into further detail in episode 312 on how you should do that. And also while you're at it, check out episode 275 where I show you how to write automated tests for your mailer. And I also recommend checking out the episodes I've done on background jobs. It's a good idea to move your email sending behavior into a background process. And that's because when you're sending out an email, you're communicating with an external service, which could be slow or even down. So you don't want to show those errors to the user. This isn't as much of an issue if you're using send mail or postfix in production because that has its own queue, but it's still a good idea to be aware of this. And finally, throughout this episode, we set various configuration options inside of our development config file. And you'll likely want to add options to your production config as well, but with different values depending on how you want the mailing behavior to be in production. Well, that's it for this episode on sending email with Rails. For further information, I recommend you check out the Action Mailer Rails guide because I didn't cover everything here. Thanks for watching.